Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy, with a look at the Wise Dog Tarot. <clears throat> so I don't know if this was Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Um, this is actually the death card that's on the front. But look at the beautiful box. It's got bits and pieces of the of the collage. So this is a doggy collage deck. And it looks like, um, and I know in part that it is digitally manipulated photographs. I have a friend, in fact, whose dog ended up in this. She almost bought me this deck, and I had to tell her that I already bought it for myself. Um, so she was backing it too, and we didn't realize it until later, a few months after I'd started backing it. Um, so this is a little thank you in signature there on the back. And the box, it actually um, wriggles open pretty well. There's the inside. But all of the sides of the box, again, have dogs on them. Um, it doesn't have much of a guidebook, but I don't think that that's um, a big deal because it, it follows recognizable systems, you know, right away Smith. And it has all of the dogs. Thank you to all of the dogs that came together to create the deck. And does she have anything in the back? Pentacles. Yeah, she has a basic symbolism guide, so that's interesting. Things like gladiolas. I guess that she has certain things that maybe are not in every sort of tarot deck. And so she's added them, so that's cool. And I've already been through this. I had a, I got this, which I wasn't expecting. I knew it was coming probably sometime this month, but I had no idea when. Um, and I had ordered one, two, three, four, five decks from Amazon. And they showed up, and this showed up all on the same day so it was a deck orgy for me so i was just opening them up and taking a look at them um so here are the backs which i think are very sweet um some people might complain about this cardstock but i'm happy with it because i have weak hands <laughs> so i assume i'll be able to shuffle that it does it does have kind of a um a bias, kind of a downward bias right here, so it might be a little stiff for going up, but we'll see. Um, all right, so we're just going to run through the cards, and I, at this point, I'm really happy with, with this deck. Um, so for the Fool, we've got the Snake, um, which sometimes appears in, I think it's Marseille decks as well, um, that is kind of pushing the... The fool over the edge or trying to get him to react or move and and you know a lot of decks also have the dog but since the dog is the fool in this case we use the snake now this is really um, curious that you know they have the magician here and it's being cupped by someone's hand and we have the hamsa She's into anatomical hearts. That's one thing uh, that doesn't prevent me from liking, even loving the deck, but that's a sour note for me. Is I'm not into the anatomical hearts like she is. But this is a strange magician. I don't know if it means he's dreaming. Um, yeah, I'll have to... Well, let me see if she says anything in here. Since it'll be an easy-to-find card... See, I still don't see how the magician, she gets the magician for that. Because here it is. The magician asks that you call up your personal power, the energy that sits within your soul waiting to emerge into the light. When you connect with your spirit, 
ideas form. Okay, when you connect with your spirit, ideas form. Your attitude will become more optimistic. Courage blossoms within your heart, and obstacles become nothing but yet another easy task, a small step on the path to success. So I don't know if this is supposed to be um, like the dog dreaming, you know, dreaming of what will come. I, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's one of the few cards that left me wondering. The High Priestess. So there's lots of layers. So you have this misty world here. And then you've got Lassie. And I like this, um, what I'm seeing is Lassie for the High Priestess because, of course, Lassie always knew what was going on. And Lassie always knew who to go get. <laughs> Lassie always knew. So it's definitely that sixth sense. Love it. Um, the Empress. There's a little pug love going on in this deck, and there's a little sheep at Inu love going on in this deck. And some other dogs that we see more than once. I think pit bulls we see more than once. But there's quite a wide variety. The Emperor. Hierophant. And I'll say the names because this isn't super easy to see. I'm sure people will start to complain about the... I don't mind... Um, this kind of writing, um, but I know a lot of people complained about the fairy's oracle, and so people might complain about this too, but the Hierophant. So this is a really interesting card, I thought, because it's hounds chasing the fox, and yet I think the Hierophant is supposed to kind of be the lead hound. But a hound has followers, right? And so there's kind of the dark aspect of the Hierophant. Um, so it's really, uh, you know, the, the, the pack mentality. And think of the fox as the scape fox, scapegoat fox, something like that. So very interesting. The lover is a couple of skipper keys, and there's that anatomical heart again. And this is what she does, is you see that there are like arteries pumping down into both of the dogs. <laughs> You know, sharing one heart. It's just a little too literal for me. But otherwise, a very beautiful card. Uh, the chariot. Yes, huskies. One white and one with some gray on it. So we've got that. Strength. I don't know if that's another pug or a French bulldog. There's our first Shiva Inu, the Hermit. I guess there's some Kali love going on. At least I think that's a Kali and not a, um, not a Sheltie, something she does. Wheel of Fortune. So she's placing things in different locations. Um, usually we have the bowl here. And I can't remember what we have there, but I think Scorpio would be up here. Um, so yeah, she's moved things around. But otherwise, I have no problem with that, certainly. Justice. And it's funny, the black and the white, and the black and the white. Scotty dogs. So the, there's the idea of balance. I don't know if that red is supposed to be petals or what that's supposed to be. but um, And you have both a cup and a sword here. Just very, very fun, very cool. So Hanged Man. Um, so caught in the tree with the cardinal. And then I think this is um, supposed to be uh, what is frequently referred to as a cone of shame, <laughs> uh, the kind of protective cones they put on dogs to prevent them from chewing at stitches or something like that after a surgery. And here is the uh, really fascinating death card. So the, the skeleton has wings. 
and it's like a Santa Muerte dog skeleton. Look at that. It's got designs all over it, not just on the skull, but all over it. And then the lilies. So I don't know if this is supposed to be this. I mean, that's, that head doesn't look like it goes on that dog. But anyway, um, you know, if this, if this dog is supposed to represent um, kind of the spirit having risen, from, uh, from death into a heavenly dog paradise there, or what that's supposed to indicate. Um, it could also easily be a kind of an ancestor card, but beautiful. Um, temperance. Now here's a heart I can live with. This looks so an anatomical. So we have um, the sun. He is stepping in the water and on the earth. And that doesn't look like iris, actually. It looks like something other than iris. Um, not sure, but there's a lotus also. Oh my gosh, Chihuahua's got the devil. And I would say that maybe it's meat turns you into a devil, whatever tempts you, whatever it is that you are so attached to that you become ferocious and hard to deal with and not somebody that other people want to be around all has to do with your attachment to somebody to something um, and then there's these uh, starving dogs down here oh I see that the chihuahua is stepping on to chains or lines that these other dogs they don't have anything down here but a bunch of bones they've been chewing on. But the Chihuahua is preventing them from getting any of its meat. The shepherd falling from a tower. I'm not sure what that bird is supposed to be right there. Um, but this also makes some sense to me in a couple of different ways. One is that you don't think of a shepherd as abandoning ship. You think of a the shepherd is staying, so it could indicate not only, um, and this is a fire tower, so it's something intended to prevent the fires, and yet it is on fire. So, I mean, it, that's, a, that's a double shock. Um, yeah, and then whoever might have saved you actually ditches and runs, so there's just multiple things going on here. And there's another dove. Looks like there's lots of doves in this deck. The star. Looks like an Afghan. Looks like a Dane puppy. The moon. Looking down. So this seems to be a card of reflection very much. Looking on oneself. The sun which also seems to be maybe some harmony between opposites. That looks like um, a macaw or something, or some kind of red parrot back there. Oh my goodness, judgment. And I think these are all the dogs who are in shelters or something. But the judgment is a pit bull, and that makes a lot of sense to me, too, because, of course, that breed um, struggles with a lot of judgment. But there's that anatomical heart again. <laughs> Here again, we have the zodiac signs, uh, same as with the Wheel of Fortune. And this looks like an old dog, so it's interesting that the world is represented by an old dog. Having seen many seasons, it knows, it knows how things go. Ace of Wands, and it was interesting when I got this deck, when I got it out of the package, um, the aces were back with the pages. So it went from two to ten, and then ace, and then page, uh, page knight, uh, queen, king. But I brought them all back forward. And it's interesting because this looks like a wand. It, just, it doesn't look like just a stick. But I'm not sure if there's any significance there. 
And I'm not sure since it's in the air if this dog, the dog's focus isn't quite on it, so I don't know if the dog's supposed to be catching the stick or what. This is a super visually super interesting card. So the two of wands, you've got that white between the red and the black. And dogs of two different colors, but look like they're pretty much the same breed. We've got white birds down here, but look at our wands and that tree. It's going up and growing down. So really, really interesting two of wands. Three of Wands is a little more traditional, kind of forging out away from home and castle there. Um, oh, three of Wands. Four of Wands, again, fairly traditional. Happy times with friends. Five, um, and all they have is this down here. So you have to, you have to kind of know what you're looking at. Um, to me, when I look at this, this is having too many dogs in the house, and I know how that goes. <laughs> um, kind of competition for space. They're not being aggressive toward one another, but um, it's becoming a bit much to handle. Um, so the six. Doggy's looking up to another dog. And again, looks kind of like an older dog, so... Great for the Seven of Wands, um, that it would be a Border Collie, because of course a Border Collie could take on Seven Wands, no problem. Um, eight of Wands, looks like the little dog is carrying a garland. Um, yep. Nine of Wands. Again, a guardian doesn't look too battered, but a guardian. And ten of wands, which I kind of see as just a difficult passage, you know, a tricky passage. You know, unsure footing as you try to move ahead. Such a soulful look in this poor dog's eyes. Page of wands. Knight of Wands, and it's got some horses up at the top, just a, I think as a visual clue. <laughs> Knight of Wands, Queen of Wands, King of Wands. Ace of Cups. And it's interesting that there's a parrot in here too, so she must be a parrot lover as well. I suppose we can expect a, a parrot deck to come out eventually. Some more lilies. That looks almost like a white poppy behind. So that's the Ace of Cups. Strong purity messages coming on there. The two. We've got a snake down here. Looks like a non-venomous -ven non snake. And we've got names on the cups. The two dog buddies. Three of Cups. Yep, not sure why there's a swan in there. Or is it a stork or an ibis? Something like that. So, Four of Cups. It's a bored German Shepherd. Five of Cups, and this one's really curious. So it has its eye, its eye closed, and an eye open. So it's like, I'm sad about this, but I hear that bird there, and I want to chase it. <laughs> yeah. So it's almost like what aggravates you can, can help bring you out of your grief. So this is our six. This is our six of cups. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. This doesn't speak a lot to me of a traditional six of cups. It does look like your basic family dog that you would have when you were a kid. But, um, yeah. Seven of cups. Now this I do see as a Sheltie. 
and I see this, and I like this for a Seven of Cups, um, because they're, you can do anything with them. I mean, you can do just an awful lot with a Sheltie. They don't have a lot of limitations. <laughs> and, um, and to me, that's what this is. I mean, I suppose this is what your shel this Sheltie in the picture is supposed to be thinking about. But I think in terms of all of the different potentialities there in that Sheltie dog. The eight. And I think of this as doggy yearnings just to go a little further and go a little further and go a little further yet. And sort of disregard the security of home. Nine, just a happy dog, happy home dog, and a ten. And then you've got a kitty with a squirrel embedded, so everybody's happy. That makes sense to have a lab there, such family dogs. Page of Cups. Now this one's really curious because you've got, it looks like this dog is in a flood. Um, like they're on some piece of floating debris in a flood, and the octopus is offering the cup. It's almost like the octopus is the page of cups, you know, offering something to this little dog, and then a seagull here. So that's a very curious card. I'm not sure quite what that's getting at. Knight of Cups. Love the expression on this dog's face. And again, we have horses up top. Now that's a really pretty heart. So there's our Knight of Cups. And the Queen of Cups. King of Cups. Back to the Louds with an eel in there. And a heron. And a fish about to jump into the dog's mouth. <laughs> Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. Three of Swords. So it's interesting that it's like the heart is tied to a clock. The clock is ticking. It's also tied to her. So my feeling, of course, that looks like an old dog. Is that this is um, a dog that has passed on, but they are still connected at the heart. But it doesn't need to be an anatomical heart, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so four, like sitting out the sitting out the games. Five, and this kind of freaks me out when they start holding swords in their mouth. It's like no swords in the dog's mouth. That is, that's that's a little grating to me. There's other ones where that occurs. Um, but this is like, I'm going to get the approval because I've brought all of the swords and then the other, what looks like a puppy. And doesn't, you know, doesn't even know the game, um, gets no attention and no praise. This one I'm not so sure about in terms of the six of swords. Um, I don't, it looks like the dog's being really gentle, but that looks like it's a chick baby duck and it's like baby duck turn go away from the dog <laughs> that's trusting the dog to have an awful lot of judgment yeah so it's like it's like the, the one one older duck is smart enough to know to depart and the younger one doesn't so it's interesting that you know Kind of like with that page of cups it's like is the dog the central figure here for the six of the traditional meaning of the six of cups is the dog the central figure here i'm not sure the seven oh my gosh it's going to cut his tongue off 
um, and maybe there's a point there that uh, things will come back to bite you. But I like that. Excuse me. I like that um, she's depicting it as a circus or a festival. In which, in other words, the stakes in the thievery aren't really that high. And I, I think that's also true in the Rider Waite Smith. Although you can see the tents in the background as being military tents. But they're all different colors, which generally wouldn't be the case if it was a military encampment. So, yeah, there's some trickiness going on here, but it's, you know, there's not high stakes involved. The eight, fenced in. And of course, this um, person who made this deck also made the crow tarot. So I'm sure she couldn't help but put some crows in. There's that. They appear here and there, just like the doves are appearing here, here and there. The nine is kind of amusing. There's cats. And I see this as a dog with his eyes open like, are those cats? Do I hear the cats coming to pounce on me? I'm trying to sleep here in my pillow. <laughs> Do I hear the cats up on the counters or trying, you know? or sneaking up on me. Um, the 10. Oh my goodness, this is, look at, it's not showing sadness. And then there's this picture up here. So there's just, there's a couple of different ways that I can see this as this being the dog that's in her arms and, sh and this dog has passed away. Or I can see it being a dog buddy that has passed away. Or I can see it as a new dog in the household. And so this dog is being neglected. Many ways to look at that Ten of Swords. Here's my friend's dog featured in here, Ribsy. Page of Swords. Again with that sword in the mouth. It's like, no, get the sword out of the mouth. Knight of Swords. And it looks like there's a hurricane going on here. So maybe he's coming to rescue someone in the storm. The Queen of Swords. I think that's a Saluki. And King of Swords. There's another Shiva in there. And another anatomical heart. Ace of Pentacles. Such a cute picture. Two of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles. Looks like they're helping each other get over the wall. Four of Pentacles. Yep, burying all the bones, gathering them up. Quite a few shepherds in here, too. Five of Pentacles. And that says Animal Shelter up there. Six. And we have two different anatomical hearts. And so this is like the second place I'm seeing. So we had human hands just barely in the magician. And now we have human hands here. So yeah, to me that's a curious six of pentacles. Seven of pentacles. There's enough that I can take one, maybe. <laughs> or having found a treasure and not being able to fit it all in your mouth. Eight um, of pentacles. And so this is interesting because it's like the dog is running off to find another stick. 
like we have to put all of our we'll use a stick to demonstrate so this is paired this is paired this is kind of almost paired this is almost paired so it's like he has to run and go get another stick to pair up with the pentacle nine nine of pentacles this is black lab it looks like to me poodles i wonder where the, if the poodles would show up um and i think we've got different ages of poodles in here this looks like adult but not older poodle and the black one looks like an adult but the white one looks like a puppy to me and the bluebird of happiness And this looks like an old dog, which is odd. It looks like an old dog for the Page of Pentacles. But look what she did to the pupil of the eye. It's, yeah, <sighs> Pentacle in the eye. So that's a curious card. And this dog seems to be living in a luxurious surrounding. Knight of Pentacles, we've got another horse in there, but different sort of situation. Looks like a little Pekingese. Also, tons of poppies, which I love poppies, so that works for me. Queen of Pentacles. Okay, so this is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, I'm guessing. <laughs> so when I saw that, I thought, not queen, it used to be the king, but anyway. But they do have kind of a feminine look, so. And then the King of Pentacles. And I take this as being, you know, a grounding dog, a terrier, but certainly not everything featured. In um, these ones are short. These are all low to the ground dogs, but certainly not standard poodles are actually kind of long-legged. So um, in the courts, they seem to have she seems to have um, chosen specifically um, dogs that are closer to the ground. Um, so in her name, MJ Kulanane, I don't know, and I believe this was it's either Kickstarter or Indiegogo, but very happy, very happy with this deck and how it turned out. And it's just so, so attractive. You know, you sometimes you just don't know until you get something in your hands whether, you know, you're going to like the art or not. And I do. So let's give it a shuffle. You know, I even just like the backs. I feel like the backs are great, too. Um... So again, it has a, a bias in one direction, which is not the... Oh, but look at that. It shuffled quite nicely. So, um, so yeah. Another animal deck that I really like. And I don't like all of my animal decks, but I do like my mystical dogs, my magical cats. Um, I like the Oracle deck, the dog Oracle deck I just got, and this is great, beautiful, loving it. So there you go, the Wise Dog Tarot, and I'll try to find it, because I haven't been on the actual site where it was posted. For a long time, you know, I just got it, and from there on, it's all just been about the um, the creator communicating with us. Um, but I'll see if I can't find it so that I can put it down in the information box below the video. All right, everybody, there it is, the Wise Dog Tarot.